after going through all the drug stuff in Boston with my mom, we end up moving back to Indianapolis with my grandmother. And it just started this whole, Boston, my mom getting on drugs, it started this whole firestorm of moving around and negativity between my family members. It just was so much hectic crisis, family crisis stuff going on that I can't even begin to tell you all the stories and hectic stuff that went on during this time. So I'm not gonna, I might come back and tell some stuff later, but I'm not gonna describe all of that stuff. But it was a lot of negative stuff going on in my life in those years. But my mom went to prison eventually because due to her life of crime, drugs and crime and all of that, she went to prison. My grandmother, my little, my middle brother went to my, his dad. My little brother went to my grandmother. My grandmother did not take me because we were having a clash and because she didn't like my sexuality. So I went to a group home. And that's what I want to, that's what I want to talk about, the group home and how it made me who I am. In a group home, if, for those who don't know what a group home is, a group home is a place for boys or girls or both together, usually separate, that for kids who have behavioral problems, kids who are homeless, kids who have families that are neglectful, who don't, um, you know, they basically they were taken from their parents and couldn't find foster parents. You live in a house that has a bunch of rooms with a bunch of other kids, with a bunch of other people your age. In the group home I was in, I was in two different group homes. I was in one group home for young, when I was younger, and then when you get to a certain age, you're too old to be there, you gotta go to the older boys group home. So, you have a group of staff members who work at the house, they get paid to be there, that um, have certain days that they work, and so you be these become your parents. It's like a group of um, probably nine, 10 people that work different shifts. Like you got some that's in the morning from eight in the morning to three to 5 p.m. and another one come in at five and then stays till eight, just different times. Sometimes it's split into three, sometimes split into two. It's just different times of the day that they are there living with you. Um, they're there to be supervisors. Um, so in life, when you're homosexual, during this time, you re the, the stereotype of being homosexual is almost like we're like low, like nerds and you can say as far as popularity, like it's like a crutch of like being a homosexual makes you low on the totem pole. But being in a group home, it taught me that being homosexual was not a crutch. It actually helps you get what you want. For example, the reason why the stereotype is like that is because the heterosexual community controls the controls stereotypes a lot, especially that, that goes along with homosexuality. So like you, I know you guys seen Revenge of the Nerds and one of the nerds was like homosexual. But if you think about it, every openly gay person in high school, in junior high, blah, 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 they are usually popular. People know them. People, even if they don't agree with their lifestyle, people know them, and especially if you are flamboyant, funny, faggot, you, people kind of like, you make people laugh. You learn, you know how like fat people, a lot of fat people are funny because they had to learn to be funny to protect them from people's ridicule. You know, some people go and hide in the corner like, oh, she called me fat. But some of them learn to come back with some snappy jokes because, you know, and gays are just the same. You you learn to be feisty. You learn to read. We call it reading. We, you learn to come back and play the dozens with them because of who you are. And usually that makes you popular. That makes you funny. That makes you entertaining. And... It goes the opposite of stereotype that we are low on the totem pole. I say this because in the group home, that's exactly what I learned. I learned that just because I was gay, I did not have to be low on the totem pole. As a matter of fact, I was the top. Anything that I wanted, because I was so the favorite of the staff members, of the um, of even the residents, I was the favorite. First of all, because I was messing around with some of the boys. <laughs> Second of all, because um, the staff members, I'm just like, I was smart, I was funny, I was, you know, I was, you know what I'm saying? I was the one who can be liked. Then within the residence, I was a fighter. Nobody could just say something out of their mouth disrespectful to me without me beating your ass. 
You feel what I'm saying? I'm somebody that was a fighter. So when you're a fighter, there's a certain respect that come along with it. And I was loyal. So if somebody was messing with one of the boys in the house and they wanted to fight, I'm right there to fight with them. When some of the, the straight boys would be punks and not help them, but I would be outside in the yard fighting with them. Boom, 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 boom. Because that's me. That just was, that's how my mama raised me to be a fighter. She knew early on, honey, if you're going to be, if you if you're going to be this little sissy, at least you're going to be a fighting sissy. <laughs> so that's what I learned early on. That gay does not have to be a crutch. In a group home, you really... It's like they become your family. They become your... your You interact and learning people. They become your society within a society. You learn how to manipulate staff members into getting, giving you what you wanted. You learn how to oh, go above the system. You learn how to do whatever you wanted to do and translate that into the real world. Everything that I learned in the group on how to deal with men, on how to deal with um, jobs, on how to deal with anything that somebody might try to stop you from getting what you wanted, how to manipulate the system and work it, I learned everything in the group home. It's also when I met Ty, and I want to introduce you guys to my girl Ty again. You should, I'm sure if you watch Entrance Heart that you um, watch her, so here she comes. Hey, Ty! <laughs> and this is Ty. Hello. No, this is Chalk Mommy. Oh, no, no. I haven't been to the shine since the beginning of the entry of our day. Still a little cramped. Still a little cramped. You know, um, when I met Ty, she was the person, the first person that I knew this is an ally. This is a person who is like me, who is, you know, I can tell by how she acts that this is another gay person. When we met each other, it was, we never, I don't remember. I don't ever remember a discussion of anything, like as far as like sexual orientation or like what we, where I was, what was going on. It just like, boom, it just like, mm. we knew what was going on. Yeah, to the, my sister. Mm, right, it was no <laughs> question of, um, do you like boys? It was nothing like that. I, I even start, immediately started having conversations about, about boys. <laughs> it was no, no question. It's immediately, I immediately told her about the guy that I was dating, which we talked about earlier today named Lance. She was telling me about hers. We just immediately started talking about boys like girls with chit chat. Mm -hmm. It was no kind of question. I knew what you were. I know what you are, girl. This is what it was. It, it just clicked it. Like, like it was just like, and right, mind you people, we were pretty. Right, we were like 12-ish, 12, 12, 12, almost on the 13 that ages. Mm -hmm. We were, we definitely knew we had a, all, we had our own experience previously. Similar hers was definitely similar to mine. Mm -hmm. Um, more getting fucked with her, less <laughs> <laughs> it's like, girl, the girl, I, that's why I don't come to the child, girl. The business is <laughs> So, we, we, it just was a, we knew that we were allies. And when you, at that point in your life, when you're gay, I don't know, different people, you just accept who you are in yourself. You may not be open to the world, but at this age, you know what you like. You know that people can't read your mind. Exactly. People can't see what's going on in your head. Exactly. But you can, as long as you can contain it and keep it a secret, you can have your little feelings. Which I think that's what we were doing too. It's like we were pretty much out to ourselves, but like everybody else was, we, we kind of was like, I mean, we no, don't get me wrong, you couldn't hide what was there for real. But but as far as like accepting and saying that you know this is who we were and stuff like that, I'm just right? Just really saying that. I am gay mm -hmm. was not appropriate for us at the time. Exactly. Like, definitely for me. When you met me, mm -hmm. how did you know that I wasn't a boy to have? Um, it just I, I it that never even like registered in my head. Like instantly, you became sister to me. Like I don't know. I'm, I don't, it just never was, mm, I don't know, I just didn't feel it, girl. Maybe I had smelled pheromone. <laughs> I just was like, no. <laughs> but, it's, but I just never thought that, no. And it wasn't as though, like, you weren't an attractive guy or nothing like that. It wasn't like that. It's just, I don't know. For me, it just was, I just knew that this was my sister. This, I, this is, at that age, I knew there was a separation between a boy and, and a homosexual uh -huh. and a girl. Uh -huh. It just, I knew that this was one of the girls. We don't have each other. Exactly. We have the boys. We get the boys together. Exactly. It was about, we were, you know, cut from the same cloth. It was, you know, we are, you know, like the girls. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? This is us. We don't have together. It just was something that was automatic. I don't know why it was automatic, but it just, but was. It just was. It just, it just was. something like, that. I just knew not to, that that wasn't. I don't, even, I don't even remember. There's never been a time I ever thought about that. Like, right. It was just like, oop, this is my sister. It just went from there. So, mm -hmm. when you grow up gay, 
before that's what I wanted to stress about this before you come out to the world you are already out to yourself I definitely knew what I was and I knew she was one of me oh, so that's God.